most difficult manufacturing process on earth. All right. Manipulating DNA and CRISPR, quite frankly, is easier. Yeah, I said it. How is Qualcomm helping Intel improve? No, they wouldn't be. But if the idea behind it, and this is a traditional model, for example, for TSMC, TSMC launches a new process node. They obviously do a lot of research to get it going, but it's by doing high volume manufacturing, they get better at manufacturing. So TSMC gets better at manufacturing leading edge because they're immediately working for Apple. If Intel doesn't have a new customer, how can they spend the money to actually do high volume manufacturing? Essentially, they're just going to be creating really expensive wafers they throw out because they have no customer. That's the problem. Someone say money, which is funny to you. Shit like gene editing is magic while semiconductor uh, construction, you grasp. Yeah, that was the weird thing to me too. Um, I mean, essentially, semiconductor manufacturing is just like constructing 3D structures out of like different colors of Play-Doh. The problem is you can't see what you're doing because it's so tiny. Am scientists can confirm CRISPR is easy. It's a fucking miracle, right? CEDAW, what if NVIDIA inquires Intel? It would make no sense. And I assume they get blocked on numerous antitrust issues. Yeah, these days you can barely measure what you're doing. Yeah, they had to invent entire new methodologies. So they call like backscatter electrons. It's what KLA works on. So cool. So cool. In the next 50 years, me wild for biotech? Agreed, 100%. Agreed. The speed at which science is moving is incredible. It is incredible, guys. Doesn't backscatter give you atomic ratios? I have no clue. Atom probe tomography is cool. Mm-hmm. Isn't CRISPR just plugging in vats of aborted fetuses into a computer or something? I don't know. Seek Jesus. <laughs> Looks like NVIDIA has given up most of its gains. Keep going. I have no position in NVIDIA. I don't give a shit. Earnings plays tonight. I'm not playing any earnings plays. Going down the line, CrowdStrike had both an upgrade and a downgrade. So I'm going to use that as a fancy way of saying no one knows how CrowdStrike does tonight. Salesforce, I'd play calls. Okta, I'd probably play calls. Chewy, I wouldn't play at all. Viva, I've played before. They burned me. I have no viewpoint. Five below, specialty retailer. What's their chart look like? Ooh. Probably calls. For those that don't know, five below, it's really simple. Everything in their store is $5 or cheaper. Specialty retailers like this, it's come down to execution. If company does well, if company's management does well, then the company themselves do well. Uh, I'd probably do calls. I have no, but I don't know enough. Again, I'm not playing it. But if I had to, probably calls. 
Uh, pure storage, um, their chart is the, one of the scariest charts in the market right now. It's a very, very good company. Surely they will falter at some point on earnings. I don't know if today is the day. Sagano works at five below. Yeah. Sagano is for sale at five below. Uh, how? I have no thoughts on how. Good God. An industrial with a forward PE of 77? Jesus. Yeah, I wouldn't touch him. Yeah, Okta, we spoke about briefly earlier, single sign-on. Look at this chart. I would do calls on these guys if I was playing them. I'm not. Department of Justice and SEC reportedly investigating Tesla over a secret glass house project. Fuck. Olin is another one that makes bullets. Olin, though, is also a specialty chemical producer. Olin is a lot bigger than just ammo. I think how is just ammo. Like Yuzi Emperor, if I didn't thank you before, thank you very much for the sub. Greatly appreciated. We should be momentarily about to get our first market on close number. It's the preliminary number. It's the number that does not matter. The real market on close number that matters is the one that comes in at 350. Secret glass house. We spoke very briefly about crowd strike. I don't understand. Someone say money. Why does the early market on close not matter as much? Just because it gets essentially the data is as of three thirty. It gets overwritten by the three fifty data. So it's not like you add them together. It's like you literally throw out the three thirty number when the three fifty number comes out. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, caffeine. We saw. Federal prosecutors are seeking information about benefits paid to Elon Musk. I don't. Uh, I don't understand this one. I don't understand either. What does the glass house refer to?
how did bond yields perform today? Roughly flat. Wow. Isn't the term glass house from the expression throwing rocks from a glass house? Yeah, but we're talking about Elon Musk here. We don't know what it really is. Bond yields were actually flat today. Yield collapsed a little bit more. Uh, WTI went back above 80. Oil bulls getting happy. Literally a glass house for Elon. That'd be funny. So use of company funds that have been described internally as a house for chief executive Elon Musk. Oh, then absolutely investigate that. You can't do that. You can't do that. You have to disclose it. So that's why we don't know if the CFO was fired. An order was placed for millions of dollars of large format glass panels, which allegedly resulted in an internal investigation by Tesla lawyers and board members and the potential misuse. Interesting, Reddit swap. Yeah. Yeah, you can't do that. That's very similar to, by the way, what happened against Bernie Ebbers. Um, That is an old school executive who ran a company by the name. No, Bernie Ebbers was WorldCom. Who the fuck was the Tyco? The gold toilet brush handle. What was it? Kozlowski. Dennis Kozlowski. Yeah. Yeah. He bought shit for his house using Tesla money. Apparently, that's not a problem as long as you disclose it. Otherwise... It's very much against the fiduciary responsibility of an executive. Yep, Tyco. Yeah. Let's see. Where's the... Yeah. Former CEO of Tyco International convicted in 20, uh, 2005 of crimes related to his receipt of $81 million in unauthorized bonuses. Yeah. You can't do that. Yeah, these kids don't know because last year Jeffrey Skilling agreed. Penny Ether says, the SEC rules require public companies to disclose transactions above $120,000 in which a related party, such as an executive officer, has a material interest. Yep. Like, the SEC, Department of Justice, etc., wants to prevent the idea that public companies exist as a slush fund specifically for the executives. By the way, the story of Dennis Kozlowski and apparently the story of what may come out about Elon Musk is... Just disclose this shit. If you tell investors you're doing it so investors know, hey, this company is giving way too much money to our chief executive. That's okay. It's not like if, if Elon Musk was using Tesla funds for personal uses, that's not the problem. The problem is how he's disclosing it. And yes, this guy went to jail for it. So for anyone saying, oh, they're just pressuring Elon Musk, you're proving you don't know your fucking history. Just say. Zirconium, you should have used Twitter funds. The funny thing is, is yes, because Twitter itself is a privately held company. Milwaukee Blizzard, seems like stealing. If you're going to steal, you just have to communicate you're stealing. Right? SpaceX, correct. You mean X, the name he gives everything? Yeah. So, Uneven Donkey, apparently Elon is now being investigated by Department of Justice. There's some project at Tesla, which may have involved using Tesla, a publicly traded company, all right, for personal Elon Musk projects. 
And the problem with that is it's a non-disclosed bonus or payment. You can't do that. He could step down and crash the stock. I mean, yeah, but, but he has a lot of money. And <laughs> Bitaska. Twitter is private, sure, but there are other holders. Saudis would go out on a limb to get you. Yeah, if you do it for a private company, if you misuse it, you can open yourself up to private suits, but it's not like the SEC is going after you. Good read about Instacart, Snowflake, and Informatica. SEC tried to get him on the funding secured. That whole lawsuit was stupid. Funny enough, I actually think the SEC was in the right. But at a certain point, like, how do you, like, how do you target that necessarily? What's the actual application? If you're a CEO, you can't just speak openly and essentially make shit up. You are impacting thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people's, you know, stocks, et cetera. You don't want a world in which an executive is free to step there and just make shit up on Twitter about acquisitions, divestitures, et cetera. Generally, generally you believe longing snowflake is a fool's errand. Interesting. Snowflake, they're all horrendous for disposal of vacuums. There's a point of putting one dog in the machine, getting 20 or 40. Got it. Net revenue retention is about to fall off a cliff, is it? What is it going to take for data engineers, data scientists, et cetera, the management to view data platforms as payment platforms? This is an interesting argument to follow this person. I'm not sure I fully agree with that, but I have to read more about this. You're buying a single CRM September $145 put. Good luck, sir. Cavitate says, agreed. Elon types too much for his own good, but hey, he can do what he wants. No, he can't. No. <laughs> when you are a named officer for a publicly traded corporation, you are restricted in what you could do for good reason. For good reason. And you signed up for it. That was what you gave up in order to access public markets. Without public markets, Elon's not a billionaire, period. Yeah, CrowdStrike definitely has puts on flow, which would make sense. There are, we've seen channel checks come out both positive and negative for CrowdStrike. Morgan Stanley downgraded them on Monday the same day Wells Fargo upgraded them. Am I going to play Lulu? I haven't decided yet. Probably not. I'll buy after. Yeah, Palo Alto had a lot of put flow. We know how that worked out. I think I actually have like 20 shares of uh, CrowdStrike, by the way. 
if I played five, what would I get? Something 31 plus days out and something near at the money. So probably the 190s, but I'm not playing them. That's all. Chad, you're not a fan of an outdoorsy fitness clothing clothing brand going into the fall? Ballsy. Pumpkin spice and everything nice. I'm Steve. Classic Palo Alto. Oh, you guys thought we had shit to say, lol. We we're just busy with meetings during the week. Yes, we need innovators like Elon. I agree. Elon's a net force for good. I'm telling you. I will, I will, I'm not a fan of the dude, but what Elon has accomplished, and yes, I know he purchased, he purchased Tesla. He didn't invent Tesla. But nonetheless, what Tesla has managed to do in pushing along electric vehicles, I think is a net positive. All right. I think Elon could have had even more positivity if he had just had some better filters around his worst instincts. But yeah, I feel that way about a lot of people. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, Ed, you like that? Electric, net positive. Uh -huh -huh. You think it's true for all people? No, there are some net negatives. Alex Jones has no redeeming quality. Hitler had no redeeming quality. Fuck the trains. Fuck his shitty art. Some people are net negative. I do not think Elon is, and I do not like the guy. Some of y'all don't remember, if you wanted to be environmentally conscious... You were driving a Prius. Priuses were not fun to drive. They sucked. Then all of a sudden, you can go to an electric car that drove like a Tesla. Y'all ever driven a Tesla? Seriously, they're fun to drive, period. Yes, you can bitch about the interior materials, whether they're, quote, comfortable or not. I'm not going to argue that point. I'm not going to argue that point at all. Chad says, I guess I mean, does Elon having the tism, being an asshole, the reason these companies are successful? I, I think he had an important role to play. Hey, hold nut. Thank you very much for the raid, my friend. Hello, all my hold nutters. What's the plural for hold net hold nuts community? It's like all you holders of nuts. Is that the better way to appropriately say it? What's a good respectful term? Either way, welcome, my friends. Sida, what is Tesla using the H100s for? Training, self-driving, FSD. <laughs> uh, snip nuts? <laughs> nut jobs. I like nut jobs. Nut jobs are great. Petty, did the U.S. develop eugenics? Who? Someone in the U.S.? Right? I don't know. Probably. Nut goblins. Nutty boys. Nutty boys is another good one. Well, we want to be more inclusive. Nutty people. How about that? Yep, chip architect equals Jim Keller. Yep. Hold nut made 80k. Good for him. I am him or her. Sorry, I don't even know. But I'm proud. I like seeing retail do well. How is Sentinel One doing today? Because that is the company I have some shares in. Chewy's going for it, is it? Look at it go. 
Reminder, tonight for earnings, CrowdStrike and Salesforce are the two big ones. Yeah, the good news is, is all the companies we care about are um, by four or five. Yeah, the U.S. would sterilize imbeciles as much. Yeah, I've read about those reports, yeah. But keep in mind, I'm not going to sit there and say the U.S. invented it. All right, put it this way. If I invent some great technology, it's not the United States invented it. It's someone in the United States, right? You added Palo Alto to the IRA. Fuck it. You picked really today? Ballsy, my friend. I respect that. No, I'm not playing shit tonight. I do have a few shares actually of CrowdStrike, by the way. I don't care. Uh, I have shares for a reason. I'm extremely risk off right now. I don't trust this week. Uh, CrowdStrike, I would do calls, believe it or not. I think CrowdStrike goes up. Salesforce, I would lean calls. It's a discuss. Either they're doing a good job cutting costs or they will never fucking learn. AI is important to Salesforce. They just made a large investment in Hugging Face. I assume they're going to talk about it. And Salesforce is a natural winner in an AI-connected world. Keep that in mind. Okta, I would do calls. I think Okta probably outperforms. Chewy, I have no thoughts on. Viva, oh, Viva's expensive. We know that much. And I've played them before. It did not work out. But... I'd probably do call. Oh, look at this gap below. That's ugly. I'd probably do puts. Five below. Specialty retailers have been doing well, particularly at the lower end of the spectrum. And five below was probably one of those companies that does not necessarily directly compete with Walmart. Walmart's the fear I would have. I'd probably do calls here. Any interesting options activity going on today on any of these companies? Anyone feel like they know? Remember, CrowdStrike was upgraded and downgraded on Monday. So people are on the fence about CrowdStrike. Why do you feel like you're the pilot with MCAS activated? Crowd and Vive shares here. Blessed luck, my friend. I'm cheering for you. Chewy has a lot of calls. Interesting. Ooh, give me liquidity. 1.7 billion to the sell side. Oh, boy. Here's the funny thing. The story of differentiation. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, you have a company called Ollie's reporting. Ollie's would be the type of company to compete with Big Lots. Big Lots crushed it this week. Big Lots did very, very well. Is Ollie's a sympathy play or a competitor in this case? Wait, MongoDB is a publicly traded company? Yes, yes, they report tomorrow. You like Ollie's? Yeah, they're small. But. Knox event. Aren't they open sourced MongoDB? Their software may be open sourced, but you still need to pay someone to put that shit in servers, right? There's still infrastructure. Hey, they'll still generate a bill. Anyway, guys, I will be right back in two minutes. Give me a moment. Refill my water.
All right, folks, we back. Fulcrum point was 451. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, 451. So whatever number it was closest to, whole number it was closest to. And whole number is used and not a decimal point because of how many spaces they allow me for the poll option. That's all. Uh, Nox event, you kind of assume they're doing a Red Hat thing too? Yes. You use MongoDB for years and never paid them a dime. It's a little work, but it's not rocket science. Yeah, my understanding, I'm not truly familiar with what MongoDB. I've been told it's essentially a, a, <laughs> a non-relational database for people who don't want to learn specific syntax. I don't know how true that is or not. Air is giving up all of its gains today. Oh no. Still up 3.3%. That's a fucking candle. By the way, here's my cautionary moment on air. I love this company. I've been talking about them for a while. Long term, nothing's changed. Short term, air is heavily levered to automotive production. If we're really at risk of automotive strikes, how's that good for air from a headline? Oh, small F. Small F. But yeah, guys, how is that good for air from a headline standpoint? Uh, Beast Dad, you're not sure why you'd use Mongo over something like Postgres, which works fine with schema list DBs. So Beast Dad, here's something I've heard from other people. Correct me if I'm wrong. The whole value proposition behind MongoDB and Snowflake is that it's essentially a cloud-based database, a uh, uh, cloud-based database supplier that is essentially irrelevant to your overall cloud provider. So if you have all your data contained, for example, into an Oracle database, you're kind of stuck who your cloud provider is, theoretically. Am I right or wrong? Just use NoSQL. Bulls going to win? Are they? Oh, they're so far. It's close. It's really close, guys. Come on, Bears. Do we have time? No. Bears are in control. Bears are winning. Oh, Bulls are winning. Time. Wow. I got the Bulls winning. I got the Bulls winning. Hold on. Did they win? Someone call it. What's the number? What's What do we close at? Someone who did not bet. Let it settle. Yep. Steel cold kegs got us at 450.92. I've got 450.99, but from someone who bet on the bull on the uh, bearish side. Yeah. I've got 450.92, believe it or not. Bears win, and it's a super close one. Let me give it up to the sourers. I'm sorry. I do make the rules, but yes. As close as it gets. All right, guys. We should have Okta about now. Okta is first up. I would expect them to do well. Um, their numbers are out. They are up almost 9%. Single sign-on to Valhalla. Give my points back, Bear. No. Yeah, now you're at 4.51 and after hours, see? Okta's your biggest long holding. Good job. Ooh. Second quarter adjusted EPS, 31 cents. The estimate was 22 cents. 
That's a beat. That's a beat. Hey, Beef Strong. Currently, what's good is being in an Octa. Oh, wow. Fiscal year adjusted EPS, $1.17 to $1.20. They previously saw between $0.88 cents and $0.93. Cents. Keep in mind, about $0.10 cents of that is what they already delivered. So it's still a significant guide up. Adjusted EPS, yes. You use adjusted EPS for these companies. I know. I'm sure, I'm sure this is a company that is still rewarding itself with shares. But if you haven't noticed yet, that number was positive. This is a company which has never had a full year of positive EPS. So it's kind of cool to see what happens when a software company goes from just growth, growth, growth to actually starts turning into profits. You want to see it. Five below is five below. But like, what's the adjustment? It means a different thing for each company. Yeah, it does. It does. It's almost certainly stock-based compensation in this case. All right. Guys, if we want to break out the conversation again about adjusted EPS, I'll pull out my accounting school knowledge. And I'm sorry, but all the people who are like, gap is the only thing that matters, you're fucking wrong. Just saying. And I hate how they treat stock-based compensation, particularly for free cash flow. Stop adding it back. That's bullshit. That does not destroy... Gap versus non-gap, okay? It does not. I hear you. I think you're wrong. Jesus. Five below is five below. Five is a beat? Well, what's that guidance look like? Because market's not happy with them at the moment. You're be strong. Nice. You've been removed from the market for the last three weeks or so. Focus on another income stream. Good for you. Your company is just starting to delve into AI. Excellent. You may have closed a deal that leads to annual recurring revenue. Well played, my friend. Give me caffeine. You're literally learning this right now. Yeah. The great example I would say about non-gap versus gap is look at the history of Sam Adams. <laughs> You could also look at Cleveland Clips. Basically, companies that do acquisitions or large write-offs of inventory. Yeah. It's important. And by the way, you're allowed, you're allowed to hate how they treat stock-based compensation. I'm with you. How they treat it, particularly for free cash flow, that's bullshit. But that's not an overall indictment for every time a company uses adjusted versus non-adjusted EPS. AI is going to make you money. Excellent, my friend. Uh, yeah, it looks like five below beat both top and bottom line. See, fiscal year guide down. That's why slight guide down, not the biggest, not the biggest, but they are guiding down. Crowd strike is mooning. Morgan Stanley, wait, that's not really mooning yet. Let's wait. For 100 AI units. Be honest, H100, A100, now they down, yeah. See, 3.5% for a software company, for a cybersecurity company ain't bad. CRM up, crowd strike down, yep. Warning. If you are in CRM, that stock will move during the earnings call. Mark Benioff is a prolific pumper, shall we say. And I would be very cautious about them dropping the AI word a shitload. Premium's correct. You understand you have to know the company fairly well to trust adjusted numbers, which is the point, which is the point, by the way, for adjusted numbers. Because the idea is, is if you want to understand what's sustainable for how a company performs in the future, you don't want situations where a company reports a $30 gain because of some treatment of a um, 
divestiture or acquisition, throwing off your numbers. Chewy's out and it looks like it's up. CrowdStrike is the most boring stock right now. It's bouncing around a bit, but it's it's been behaved. Let's check Okta before we move to CRM and Chewy. Okta is a fucking... Promo, Google is one of the few that you would insist on. Most companies I would insist on, but anyone with the accounting background will tell you, you then have to go in and look at their statement of cash flows and their statement of reconciliation between adjusted, non-adjusted numbers so you can understand why. And then you can call the bullshit when they start adding back in stock-based compensation. That's fair. But like when you realize the EPS, the, the gap number is so much for like, step up or step down of inventory charges, you're like, that's bullshit. That doesn't tell you what the future performance is going to be. The funny thing is, is the, the number one person who bitches about adjusted EBITDA or adjusted numbers is Charlie Munger. And one of the companies you need to use the adjusted numbers is Berkshire Hathaway because the gap numbers includes all their investments. Penny, thank you for the 198 bits. Crowd strikes a beat. Tell their fucking stock that. <laughs> wow, CRM cramming its way up. Keep in mind, contents may settle on the phone call. The phone call always moves the stock. You have to know that. Mark Benioff is prolific, pro prolific on the mic. All right. Where's pure storage? Watch them fucking moon. One of these days they're down to fall. No, they're just up another five and a half percent. All right, let's see the crowd strike numbers. I want to see how good, quote, bad they did. Like, is Morgan Stanley, were they right or wrong? Um, slight guide up. I'm not even going to call that a guide up. Jesus. They beat the shit out of EPS, so they found some places to cut, clearly. All right? Adjusted EPS, 80, 74 cents against, uh, the estimate was 56 cents. Revenue, slight beat, 731 million against 724. Fiscal year revenue, between 3.03 to 3.04. Previously saw between 3 and 3.04. So that's not even a real guide up. They're just tightening the range. It's, it's slightly good. We have Salesforce's guidance. Third quarter revenue guidance of 8.7 to 8.72 billion, up 11% year over year. Full year fiscal revenue guidance to 34.7 to 34.8 billion, so up 11% year over year. Gap operating margin guidance to 13.3%. Yay. This is where I'd say I do care about gap somewhat. When they talk about operating margin, all right, operating margin's a good one for gap v non-gap because operating margin, the difference between 13.3% and that non-gap of 30%, I guarantee you is the stock-based compensation, which means even if you back out stock-based compensation, this is a profitable company. But operating margin will not include investing. So Prometheum's uh, example of Google or my example of Berkshire Hathaway, you're not talking about margin generated off of their investing activities. And that's important. So yeah, it looks like CRM did not do bad. Looks like they're getting some love. How'd Chewy do? Starting to go down, but still up three. No volatility halts, correct. Not in after hours. Speaking of, how did AMC end today? They were up big. They're up 16.7%. Congrats to the apes. They need that stock price to go up really badly in order for dilution to even work. Otherwise, you will see a Q at the end of AMC at some point. Q 
Chemlife says, the thing that's a giant red flag, this is a true statement, by the way, is when companies change reporting metrics. Almost never is a good thing. Sometimes it's okay if the biz is changing, but there's exceptions versus the rule. I would agree with that. I'll go one step further, Chemlife. Look at the example of AMD. AMD was bitched at for a while for not breaking out their data center specific products. And so they changed their reporting line or their, um, their reporting relation, not reporting relationships, um, their financial reporting lines to specifically break out an AI segment. Uh, and Intel followed suit shortly afterward. Investors were bitching for that. They wanted that. That's a good example. But when, a when, when the investors are not looking for it and all of a sudden the company changes how they do reporting, you're right, it's a negative. You sold your shares of ICCT, iCore Connect, 27%. Who the fuck are health information services? Who the fuck are these guys? Yep, so there's the CrowdStrike numbers. Annual reoccurring revenue, ARR, increased 37% year over year and grew to $2.93 billion. Interesting. Take care, Seal Kegs. Always a pleasure. ICCT was a stock that listed yesterday. Founded in 1992, headquartered in Oki, Florida. Was this a SPAC? This looks like a SPAC. Jesus, look at that shape. How did you guys find out about this shit, though? And yeah, I'll call it a shit, though. Yeah, it looks like Okta's the big winner on the security side. Hey, Bill, how you doing? Shit go paying your bills, and there's nothing wrong with that. Contrary to popular belief, if you make money on a shit co, that's fine. But if you bag hold a shit co and tell me it's a fundamental play or a squeeze or a shorts play, you'll get mocked. That's how it works. Here's storage. They missed on EPS, beat on revenue. Gap gross margin, 70%. Yeah, but the operating margin is a little bit more important. How'd that go? Yeah, pure storage is doing. Surprised they were up earlier. Yeah, they've given up most of their gains. Seems fair. Seems reasonable. Oh, what are those chewy numbers? I want to see the chewy numbers. I want to chew into them. Let's see. Uh, chewy, beat on EPS, slight beat on revenue. Good for them. Random brother, you have pure storage as an EPS beat? Okay. Let me pull their uh, numbers up. See what smarter people than me are saying. Yeah, yeah, they have it as a beat. Beat on revenue, beat on EPS. Your storage's guide does look weak, though. Dog's got to eat. Indeed.
So let's see. We've covered uh, CrowdStrike, Salesforce, Okta, Chewy, Viva. What are the Viva numbers? Do they finally do well? Uh, beat on EPS, beat on revenue. Vive is a SaaS company that provides support for the biotech sector. It's an interesting company. We've had a few people in this space come on and basically talk about how long-term it's a great company, apparently. All right, so seems a lot of beats tonight, guys. You work at Vive and they pay you in stock. You're hoping you're right. I mean, <laughs> you should know more than me, but Vive supposedly is like a really, like the mission of what Vive is trying to do, it's supposedly a really good company. But I'm cheering for you, my friend. I've heard good things about them. Looks like a slight guy down on total revenues. Very slight. Here's a low level developer. Ah. Quote, low level developers make companies work though. Particularly if you're in like the SaaS data space like that. But yeah, CrowdStrike, Salesforce, Okta, Chewy, Vive, uh, Viva. And it even looked like five below beat. I don't know if five below's guidance. Apparently guidance was flat. Pure storage also beat. So again, looks like the companies did well. Pure storage's guide did not look impressive. And it seems like they're going back down to earth on that. How did crowd do? Crowd's now down 1%. Looks like CRM, Okta looked like the biggest winner. And CRM is up now 5.3. Again, if you're in CRM, be extremely careful. I, I would expect the earnings call to move the stock a bit. Anyway, folks, thank you very much for tuning in today. Let's see who we want to raid. Go back to Twitch. You're in now calls? Yeah, I would hope so too. Take care, Ed. Pleasure, my friend. Pleasure. Sorry, we've run into a small problem. Don't worry, it's nothing on your end. Just a minor system. <laughs> Working on it. Hope to have it resolved to Oh my. All right, guys, let's pay a visit to the trading fraternity today. Always enjoy fighting new people. Yeah, small problem. Fidelity taking shit. All right, guys, thank you for tuning in, and I will catch you all tomorrow. Peace, my friends. Peace to you all.